Alright, how y'all doing out there? Um, what we're doing is we're buffing our car. We finally got a color sent down to 3000, but we're not here to look at that because I'm going to take you through that procedure uh, on the bolt-on parts over there. Uh, speaking of bolt-on parts, we got them finished last night. We got them painted. Let's go in there and look at them and see what we got. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So if we look right here, you can see that we got the doors, the fenders, and of course, our cowling painted. We basically took you through the steps and procedures of how to apply your paint, how to set your gun up, how to mix the paint, what type of paint to use, and everything up to the clear coat. Um, applying the clear coat is basically a, uh, you know, simple put it on and go situation making sure that your gun is set properly so you don't apply any runs while you're clear coating it. Uh, Minnie had to leave early last night. I was here till 11.30, 12 o'clock painting all this and she didn't want to stick around. So to apply the clear coat, uh, you just want to follow the directions, um, set your gun at a, a higher uh, pressure than what you would put the paint on and pay attention that you don't get any runs in it. If you set the gun pressure too low, what's going to happen is that it's going to put the clear on too thick. So you want to set the pressure of the gun uh, up higher than normal. Um, I usually shoot my clear at approximately 45 to 50 PSI. What that's doing, that's blowing the clear on there. It's giving it a nice even coat with minimal orange peel and it's going on thick enough to where it's not going to run off. So uh, applying the clear is basically like the paint except you're going to move a little bit faster. You're going to adjust your air pressure up a little bit higher and then you're going to just put nice even coats on as you go. Some people like to put on a dry coat of clear first and what that does, that helps it tack on so you won't get no runs. I don't do that. I put three full wet coats of clear and call it quits. Um, everything came out really nice. You can see all the jams look really, really good. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this car. Um, the reason it's turning out this good, I'm going to tell you one more time, is because of the prep job. The prep job is what is making the paint job. Uh, I don't know how many times I can stress this, but if you do a shitty prep job, I don't care if you sand it down a million times, if the prep job and the materials used to do the prep job for you are not high quality, you're going to have a shitty job. It's, I mean, that's all there is to it, and, and you're not going to be happy with it. So always remember the prep job is your paint job and without a good prep job you will not have a good paint job. So we'll let these go ahead and sit for approximately a day or two uh, making sure that the clear cures 100% and once it does we'll start color sand and buffing those just like we're doing to the car right here. Um, I'm not going to walk you through the steps and procedures of buffing on the vehicle itself. Once again, the vehicle is big and bulky. It's a lot easier for me to show you how to color sand and buff your car on, let's say, the door itself instead of the whole car. So when we get to that stage, I will be back to show you how to color sand and buff to get that nice high gloss mirror finish that you need 
to have that muscle car makeover uh, extravaganza that you're trying to get. Until then, we'll see you later. And always remember, prep job is your main job. And take your time. If you fuck up, in the end, it's going to work out anyway. Don't be a fucking quitter. Don't be a fucking loser. Don't be an idiot that says, you know what, I can't do this. Because, yes, you can. You can do it if you want to do it. It's all up to you. It's your decision what you want to do in life, not mine. All I can do is guide you down the trail and help you get to where the fuck you want to go. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I am buffing. I got to get this done. And uh, down the road we go. See you later.
really sucks working on these fucking cars. You want me to tell you the real situation when you work on cars? Is when they use fucking armor on their cars. When the fucking car is full of armor or some kind of greasy substance that they use to clean their car out. And, uh, yeah. That's what fucking sucks. It gets all over your fucking hands and then you get it all over everything else and it's just a fucking bitch. That's what it is. All that just to remove a fucking door panel. What a fucking bitch. And now you can see what we're talking about when you got to access the screws. You can see as I'm zooming in, you can see the screws right there and uh, why we had to remove the door panel to get to all the screws to replace the molding. So now we can go ahead and remove our molding screws that are on the car because if you remember right, we had to rip these babies out of here. I broke them off and left the screws in the car itself. So, yeah, there you go. All that just to put fucking molding on the car. And that's what it's like when you're dealing with a classic fucking car such as this. Brand new cars, they would snap in place and pop in place and you wouldn't have to go through all this hassle. But being an old classic muscle car that this is, takes a lot of fucking work to get shit done. Okay, so now that we got the door panels off and the back seat out, um, now it's time to go ahead and replace that piece of molding. A lot of these classic cars that you see, like I'm working on, your, your muscle car makeover situation, this is how the molding goes on. Now, there's other ways that if you don't want to hassle with taking all that off, you can actually glue those in using some uh, weather strip adhesive, which is a very, very good bonding glue to glue those in. How long it'll last, I don't know. Uh, it depends on how long you take care of your car and keep your car. Uh, I've never really seen problems arise when using the uh, uh, weather strip adhesive glue that's designed for that, but you never know what can happen and there's not really a guarantee. I've used that quite a lot and never had a problem, never had anybody complain about it or come back, but you got to be real, real careful with it because you got to uh, tape everything off where you don't want the glue because once you put your piece in there and then smash it together, it'll squeeze glue out. So you got to tape everything off, you got to glue it overnight and you got to make sure everything stays and then if you do get glue on the paint you got to come back and clean that off so it's a messy job but it's a job that says I can do that if I want to but we're not going to do that because we went to the extreme of taking all this apart now I got the molding here this is aftermarket uh, molding I guess this is a uh, complete kit of every piece of weather strip that goes on the doors and the door panels so let's open that up and look at that the owner paid, let's see, how much did he pay for this? Okay, he gave $100 for this set from somewhere, Antique Classic Chevrolet Parts or something like that. And it says $100. Uh, for all we know, he probably bought that 15 or 20 years ago. I guarantee if you buy that today, that's probably going to be a lot more than $100 fucking dollars. So this is the molding right here. And... You get two moldings. We got two moldings here. One's for the door panel and then one's for the car itself. So I presume that the owner wants me to replace the door panel molding as well. Let's get over there and see which one goes where so we can get these mounted and out of our way. So I'm going to turn my door panel over just like this. And then I'm going to take my molding and we'll go ahead and take the open one and we're going to look at that and see which one goes where. And it looks like this one is the one that goes on this door panel. So that would tell me that the other one that has the little glass stopper on it is the one that goes on the car. So once we've notified where it goes, the first thing we want to do, I don't know if you can see in here, but we got, uh, we got a little bit of a mess here. We want to take some window cleaner and we want to get that wax out of there. That's from buffing it. 
and get all the dirt out because this really rides up on this edge tight and we don't want to uh, be able to see anything in between our molding and our paint job. And then basically our molding goes on just like that. Okay, what I'm going to use to locate my holes is I'm using a poker tool. This is a handy little tool to have. They're very inexpensive and very cheap. So what I'm going to do is take my poker tool and I am going to locate, hopefully, this aftermarket uh, piece of molding will be accurate enough to line all our holes up to where we want them to be. So I'm going to take my poker tool just like this and yes, the hole is lined up. We're going to take a screw as we hold it on there. We're going to put a screw onto our Phillips screwdriver, just like so. And then we're going to screw that in to the molding. I'm going to make sure that that's not overriding the edge over here. I don't want anything overriding the edge. And then we'll go ahead and screw that on. Okay, as we look at our molding, you can see how it goes. I want you to pay close attention. There's a little rubber lip on there. You can see where it sticks out. That has to be out all the way. Do not pinch that piece of rubber when you're installing this type of stuff. But uh, yeah, our molding is installed and ready to go ahead and replace the molding on the door panel. And then once we do that, we're ready to go ahead and install the seat and the door panels back into the car. So I'll go ahead and repeat my process on the other side of the fucking door. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go in reverse and put everything back together the same way that I took it off in reverse. And then hopefully be done with this job in approximately an hour. It's really not that hard. It's just complicated because you got to remove a lot of bullshit to get to the fucking felt channel, which really kind of sucks on a little small piece like that. While I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and grease up his rollers, uh, the rollers for the, uh, the crank up windows. And you can see that right here. Here's our crank up window. So what I'll do is I'll get down inside there and I will take the, uh, the, the paper backing loose over there and then I'll grease his rollers up for him so that way he'll have a nice, good, easy rolling window and the rollers won't break and become a nightmare with that angle so we'll be back we're working on our car we're putting it back together it's looking fucking good and i'm liking it uh this is going to be more than just a paint job this is a fucking restoration now but uh that's the way it goes i mean you want something nice you got to fucking work for it nobody's going to give you nothing for free nobody's going to do anything for you it's all up to you to perfect what you want in life and what you don't. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, putting back the muscle car restoration car back together so we can get the fucking thing out of my shop, down the road, and start working on the next one. We'll see you later. Now that we got the back seat all back together, uh, we got our molding back on the car. You can see it really, really looks clean. It really looks nice. I went ahead and put the seat back together. You can see all the door panels are in. I got all those parts back in there. We want to keep all those together. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the uh, window trim back on the back glass here. We're going to put all the window trim back on the back glass. And then we're going to go ahead and install the trim on the windshield itself. So what we got right here, this is the trim that we took off of the car. This is the back trim that we're going to go ahead and install. But the real deal is, this is the factory original trim. This is very rare, very hard to find. Aftermarket trim doesn't fit. If you're restoring a muscle car like this and your trim is bad, look for used trim or take your trim and have it redone. When I say redone, there's places out there, there's, there's companies that will repolish your stainless steel, will 
fix all the little dings and dents in it and make it brand new. Do not get rid of this trim. The factory trim is very rare and hard to find and the aftermarket stuff is fucking junk. So what the owner has done is he has supplied us with some factory original trim. Now he claims he's been holding on to this since the 70s and this is OEM uh, NOS General Motors trim and he's missing a part, a piece to complete the whole setup for the front and back glass. Now if I remember right I think he's got the, uh, the, the rear glass but he's missing one piece for the front glass. Let's go ahead and open that and see what we got. Um, we'll keep this wrapped up for him, give that back to him, and uh, he could probably get a pretty penny for that on eBay. And the reason he's replacing it in the first place, because he already had this, so he's told himself he might as well use it. Uh, if you look at this trim right here, you can see that it's pretty nasty and uh, used up. And I also saw some dance on it. Here we go right here. You can see where it it's dented in this area right there and uh, it just needs to be clean so why waste the money uh, fixing this up when he's got the brand new stuff we'll go ahead and leave that like that and let's see what the new stuff looks like and then of course we got the front glass right here which is actually in pretty good shape it just needs to be polished out um, this would be a time that if you wanted to polish your stainless steel to go ahead and do that now there's several, uh, there's several products on the market that you can polish your steel with. I actually just use regular old rubbing compound. Um, stainless steel is not chrome. Stainless steel is polished. One more thing about this, do not get this chrome plated. Stainless steel will not chrome plate. It will flake off and peel and you will fuck yourself in your own ass if you have the stainless steel on your car chrome plated. Always remember, stainless steel is polished, and then metal is chrome plated. So uh, what we'll do is we will look through our packages here and uh, see what we got and what we need out of the old stuff. I can see right here, this one here is bent. You can see that right there. Uh, yeah. So let's see what we got and uh, try to make all the pieces we need fit to the car. So as I open up our uh, NOS pieces here, I see that this is a front windshield piece and it's been wrapped up for many, many years. So that's our front windshield piece, one of them. And then this one here would be another front windshield piece. We'll go ahead and open that. And I see that we're going to have to clean these off. They've been in these packages for so long that uh, they've left stains on the stainless steel. But that's okay, once again, I would rather have the stainless steel, uh, factory originals, I'm sorry, factory originals, I was thinking about getting all this glue off of here. I'd rather have the factory original ones and clean those up than deal with uh, what you say is uh, aftermarket fucking junk. All right, we found all the pieces that we're gonna use. We were shy of one piece, which would be uh, this piece right here. I took it out of the pile of the original ones that were on the car, and this one here is in really, really good shape, so we're in good shape there. Let me fucking reboot so I can get this shit together, because everything that I know about this car is in this fucking brain right here, and I got to remember where all this stuff went that I took apart. Um, if this is your first go around with a fucking situation like this, it's going to be very hard. And, and, and I feel sorry for you if you didn't take a lot of pictures like I told you previously in this video set. Pictures are a fucking must when it comes to restoring this car. I didn't take no pictures because I've done dozens of these. I know where all the parts go, but the situation is you need to take pictures as a reference point so you don't get the stick in your ass and fuck yourself on stuff like this. So this is a situation that says, you know what, I might need a little bit of help doing this. Um, I've never done it before, and I don't want to scratch my new paint, and uh, I better get a second hand to help me. Because when you put this in here, what happens is that um, this all fits together at a certain way for everything to pop together. So you want to start out on one end, and then you'll hear the clips snap theirself in place as you're putting it on. 
And you can see this one here is already in there. Uh, and then you'll have to pull it down to match up for the other clip on the bottom. Because all this goes together like a puzzle. And it's very important to remember that. And then what we'll do, we'll take our final piece, slide it in there, and then we'll put these two pieces together just like this. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky, uh, but it'll go together. Just have fucking patience. Which is a, a, a medium harder activator, 6480. Uh, 35. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna owe you probably thir uh, $11. Okay. Because I, I have one here that I'm not gonna use. It's brand new, never opened. Okay. So yeah, you can come out. You can come over and get that tomorrow, all right? Why are you mad at me, dude? I got a brand new one. It's never been opened, dude. Great. Okay. All right. I'll see you in the morning, dude. Okay, that was uh, Mike, the sales guy, the, the fucking paint guy that uh, I buy paint supplies from. And I used to use a uh, clear, all right? I used a clear that he was selling one time, all right? I bought two hardeners, a fast hardener and a medium hardener. I told him, let me check it out. Let me try it. And if I don't like it, I'm not going to buy it. He said, okay, go ahead and buy this. If you don't like it, then don't buy any more. I buy the fucking clear. I used it. I don't fucking like it. And I'm getting a fucking refund on something that I fucking bought. That I'm never going to fucking use. He got a little pissed off at me there. Fuck you. That's what I say. And I would like to mention, when this car came to my shop, um, the corners of it were filled with uh, glue. So I'll let the owner uh, see what he wants to do about it. If he wants Rick the glass guy to come over and seal that back up, that's up to him. We can do that, but uh, I mean, you know, it's going to go back together like it went on the factory, all right? Factory specs on these cars were not concourse restoration situations. What they were, though, is muscle car makeover restoration ready. And that's the difference between concourse and this, all right? We're not doing a concourse restoration on this. We're doing a muscle car makeover. It's a fucking driver car that we're going to take to the car shows. We're going to go to the mom and pop burger stand over to get a, uh, an ice cream on Sunday morning after church. This, that, and the other, all right? My personal opinion, I think it looks beautiful. It looks great, all right? I would probably, you know, leave it alone and... and, and, and Deal with it, <laughs> you know? It's factory original! What the fuck? my process on the front windshield uh, just like we did on the back glass. Uh, one thing I will say to you though, you want to be careful, uh, don't get your finger hooked on these clips here, it will fucking hurt. So that's something you don't want to do is clip your fingers on them hooks or hook your fingers on those clips. It will fucking hurt and you will be whining and crying and your wife will be wondering why the fuck a grown man is crying over his car. So, be careful.
Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.